How does the back end of distribution work? Let's say we have a movie that makes 100,000. How does that 100,000 get divided up? I mean, it really depends on the movie. Um, on, on most indies, like or the way I structure most of my films, so let's say I'm bringing in investors. Um, I typically go investors first in, first out. So if an investor puts in $25,000, the first $25,000 the movie makes goes to the investor. Um, another way you could do that is you could say the first, uh, the first monies that come in up to that 25,000, you split 50-50 with the investor until the 25 is paid off. And then once it's paid off, maybe their back end goes to like 20% or something like that. Um, but uh, you know, as far as you know, where it comes in, it, it, the, if you were not going through a distributor, like say you're doing Film Hub or self-distribution, it pretty much goes directly from the platform to Film Hub to you, you know, and like it's and it's all pretty like automatic and automated. Or if you're doing it yourself, like through Amazon, it's just Amazon and you, you know. But in today, like today, three years ago, I would have said do Amazon on your own and then do Film Hub, you know, for everything else. Today, I would say just let Film Hub do it all because, you know, the more that they have data for, the more data points, the more platforms you're going to be eligible for, the more they have to work with to sell your film. It's just I, I just let them do it. But wouldn't film, nothing against Film Hub, but wouldn't they be getting more of a cut because it's more of a middle person? Or no, the, the platform Film Hub is its own search and, and play. No, 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 they are it's getting, just, they're getting, so the, like the way Film Hub works, um, they, they work just kind of like an aggregator. So it's like they, they place the movie with Amazon and then Amazon does whatever their split is with them, which might be 50-50. And then whatever Film Hub gets, you get 80% of what Film Hub does. So yeah, you are losing another piece there. But like you're just in today's in today's age, I don't think there's a lot of value in just going for one platform. You know, so like maybe two years ago, Amazon was the highest playing platform, but there's like these 20 other ones. And once you add, start adding those up there, they become comparable, you know, and, you know, if you were not giving Film Hub Amazon, because like Amazon's like it was like the first line of you know, defense, you know, it's like the first platform is the first thing they start getting numbers on. And the more your movie is doing the more attractive it's going to be to other platforms. Whereas if you they didn't have those Amazon numbers, they just had all the little ones, your movie's not looking as attractive to other platforms. So they might not take it. You know, so and then the other thing that's happened is now Amazon started their own AVOD service, which is IMDB TV, which is apparently, and it's still fairly new, but you know, word on the street anyway is it's gonna be paying more than what Amazon was, because like Avod's doing better these days. But you can't go to IMDB TV on your own. And if you just upload to Amazon on your own, you're unless your movie just does like exceptionally well, it'll never be eligible for IMDB TV. But like on through Film Hub or through a distributor, they can get there, you know? but you can't necessarily do it on your own. And having those Amazon numbers helps them to make, help, help, gives you a better chance to do that. Where else does Film Hub upload your content? I mean, they have, Film Hub has probably uh, like a hundred platforms they're working with. Like on their website, they have a list and, and it, it's all the, the usual suspects, you know, the, the Tubi, Amazon, uh, Hoopla, StreamGo Media, um, you know, they have connections with, say, Apple TV. Like, they just got signed a deal with Apple TV. I just had my first movie selected for there, actually. Oh, Not sure what the returns are yet, but we'll see. And it's just, and it, and it grows. Like, you remember, everybody's talking about how, like, how great Tubi is right now for independent film. Tubi has been around for, you know, I don't know, 10, over 10 years. And, you know, five years ago, it, it wasn't that big a deal. You know, like you weren't making that much. And now that little platform that was there on Film Hub that I was making nothing off of is now where I make 80% of my revenue. You know, so who knows what the next one's going to be, you know, like, because eventually I think these things, 
you know, they bubble out, they burst, something else comes up. So what, what's going to be the next one? It might be Plex. Like right now on through Film Hub, you know, you're making pennies on Plex. But maybe five years from now, that'll be something substantial. And is it guaranteed that your film, if you do have Film Hub acquire it, is on all these platforms? Or maybe some of them can't be placed there? No, it's it's not. The, the only thing about Film Hub is none of it is guaranteed. Like you're not guaranteed to be on any platforms. You know, it's it's totally up to the platform whether they'll take you or not. But the cool thing about Film Hub and the reason I, I keep using them is that, you know, it's completely non-exclusive. So if Film Hub can't get my movie to Tubi, but I can get it through someone else, I can do that. You know, I have that freedom. Do you have the rights back to all your films? Um. I have the rights to most of them at this point. Um, I, I have been working with uh, Indie Rights uh, distributor over the past couple of years. So I think they have like five or six of my titles. Um, aside from those, I think I own everything at this. Oh, and uh, Death Day is with uh, ITN. How much would your movie have to make in order for you to get a uh, 100,000 back as a filmmaker on a platform? Oh, um. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I'm sure it varies from. Platform. Yeah, yeah, it would vary, but let's just say most of them do. Most of them are like fifty fifty or sixty forty with the distributor or aggregator, and then maybe another twenty percent on top of that. So you'd be looking like at a hundred, a hundred and fifty. You need to make like like hundred between one hundred and fifty and one hundred and seventy five to make a hundred something like that. And that would be normally what span of time? Probably over several years. I mean, it, again, it really depends. So for for me, um, you know, I have about I have about sixty titles in the market that I see numbers from on a regular basis. And, you know, my titles make between, you know, as little as a few bucks a month, you know, all the way up to five or six thousand a month, you know, which so, you know, if I have one that's making five thousand a month, you know, you know, take a, a year to do that. Um, but, you know, I, I've seen numbers from other titles, you know, comparable budget levels to mine and even under that are making as much as, you know, 20,000 a month. Or, you know, there's one uh, just just this last month that I saw that did $100,000 in a month. You know, now these are outliers. You know, I, I think my like general five to like few dollars, that's where, that's where most are living, between $5 and like 5,000. And are there certain platforms where if it's not family friendly, don't even bother, like don't, don't waste your time, don't waste their time? Um, yes. Um, although to, to, to be honest, I, I don't know too many off the top of my head. I like, I'm starting to experiment a lot with putting titles up on YouTube as you know, my, my channel's monetized and now a bunch of these, uh, networks have come out multi, multi-channel networks. I think they call them M MCNs and a lot of distributors are striping, striking deals with these different companies. So uh, for example, uh, Indie Rights put out, uh, my, uh, UFO documentary, I want to believe, through a multi-channel network. And, you know, on their YouTube channel, it was making a couple hundred dollars a month, you know, not not much on the off of YouTube. And when they put it on that multi-channel thing, it did like uh, like two thousand in a month oh, wow. just there. You know, but but on YouTube, extreme stuff is not going to be matched with good advertisers, so it needs to be family friendly. Um, but you know, like something like like Tubi, that's also advertising based, but they're a lot friendlier to like you know horror and you know more uh, graphic content. So like I, you know, like I'm seeing I'm seeing really big numbers from Tubi on some pretty graphic stuff, and it's a VOD. And I would assume IMDb TV is the same way. And UFOs not considered family friendly. No, no, no. The UFO one it was is okay. was family friendly. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, it just it aliens just aliens were fully yeah, clothed. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They were okay. fully clothed. There, <laughs> they, there was no sex with them, but um, <laughs> but the the difference though was you know their their channel it just the multi network channel has millions of subscribers and they're specifically targeted for like supernatural stuff. So like the only stuff on that channel 
it, you know, they have some documentary and some narrative and it's all like UFO paranormal based. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've really got their audience. 